Reverend Dr. Candy Ashenden, pastor of the Apple Congregational Church, and I'm so excited you're here with us this morning. This morning, I get to welcome you to sermon number five in our 10-part series. If you've been following along so far, we've been to many outdoor locations. Well, today, our adventure takes us to a slightly different place, a place that some people view as a place of a bit of imagination. So I invite you to take off with me and to remember that we should always keep serving the peanuts. Life can sometimes be very difficult. We look around and wonder where God is. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, God is with us. God surrounds us with love and courage. Come, let us praise God for God's abiding presence. Lord, Lord thank, thank you, you for, for always being, being with, with us. us. Even, Even when, when we, we don't, don't recognize, recognize your, your loving, loving presence. presence. Today's prayer of invocation, we thank you, O Lord, that we are not alone. You watch over us, guide us, and lead us in your righteous pathways. When we stumble and fall, you lift us up and gently place us on that pathway again. When we doubt, you surround us with your mercy and peace, reassuring us of your presence through the love of others and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep our hearts and minds open and ready to serve you. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Our scriptures passage this morning comes from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 8 through 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So I have to start again this morning with a story. This story is about four people on a plane, a pilot, a priest, a businessman, and a boy scout. All of a sudden, the plane hit horrible turbulence, and the pilot knew they were going to crash. They searched frantically and discovered there were only three parachutes for the four of them. The pilot immediately ran out, said, I'm essential, I know what I'm doing, grabbed a parachute, and out he went, abandoning the plane. The businessman then said, I'm one of the smartest people in the world. The world can't live without me. And he grabbed a parachute and out he went. The priest being a faithful man, turned, picked up the last parachute and handed it to the Boy Scout and said, I have lived my life. You have your whole life to live. You take the last parachute. The boy turned around and picked up another parachute that miraculously appeared and said, no worries, we can both go. The smart businessman grabbed my backpack. Good morning. I'm here at Logan Airport and I'm gonna take off my mask. This is a place that's very safe right now, but you have to have your masks on. Social distancing is in place. There are barriers on seats to keep you separate from other family groups. It's the current status of our world. And I'm here for a reason, but I wanna start first with our story. Our story is about Isaiah the prophet delivering a message from God to the Israelites. And the message he gives before this one we're going to focus on is not a happy one. In fact, it's a very frightening message. Isaiah comes as God's prophet to tell the people of Israel they are soon about to be captured, taken into captivity in Babylon, and ultimately exiled there. Our history tells us that they in fact were, and they were exiled there for 70 years. The Israelites are terrified. So this message that Isaiah next brings, the one we just heard, is a message of comfort and reassurance. It's a message that God sends telling them that no matter how fearful we get, God is always with us, just as God was with the Israelites. This pandemic has caused fear in a lot of our hearts. It has caused fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty, fear of loss. We don't quite know what the rules are anymore, so we're living in this uncomfortable in-between time. Phrases like the new normal abound, and they alone begin to strike fear in our hearts as we think that some of the things we, that are most dear to us may never be possible again, or at least not for a while. So now is the most important time for us to hear a message that no matter what, God is with us, God is walking through things with us. And the reason we need to remember that God is with us is because fear is around us. And this is comforting to us because fear is a natural human response. I'm not going to tell you that just because we know God, just because God knows us and loves us, we're not supposed to be afraid. Of course, there are times of fear in all of our lives. Fear is a natural human response. It's not a disease, but rather a process of thinking. Fear is triggered within us when things are uncertain or when confusion reigns. And fear is something that can take hold of us. 
It can make us behave in ways we wouldn't normally otherwise react. It can bring forth from us an irrational response to someone else, to a circumstance. We might snap at someone when normally we would filter that and weed out that response before it happens. Fear is something that also can overwhelm us. It can cause us to shut down, to shrink within ourselves and be afraid to even go out in the world. This is the time when we need to rely the most on God. And it's important for us to know that God is with us because we feel sometimes like we're moving from one crisis into the next. Things are happening that we have no control over. And this is when we most need to remember that God is with us, that God is here and guiding us through this process. We need to remember that we're all on the same plane, that we are all in the same situation, that circumstances are affecting and changing things for each of us every day. We'll all react differently to these things, but we all have choices, and we need to remember and focus on where our help comes from. We know that our help comes from God, and that love and that comfort reassures us and guides us in each moment. And that's where we have choices. We have choices to be afraid or to be at peace, to shrink and do nothing, or to be proactive in the world. We can sit and wait for someone to come and care for us, or we can be the agents of change out in the world. So I've left my previous location because as I finished speaking and I was sharing the real comfort that we all need to find and remember that God offers us, a gentleman sitting almost on the other side of the gate area spoke to me and said, I can't believe it. That's just the message I needed to hear. You sounded great and thank you so much for that. Have you ever seen a Dunkin' Donuts so quiet? Could anything strike fear in the hearts of us as New Englanders more than a closed Dunkin' Donuts? The message here is that sometimes the fear comes and it's an unwelcome message. Isaiah was often bringing unwelcome messages. He had to tell the people they were going to be captured. It struck fear in their hearts. I know that some of the messages coming from the church and from me recently have not been welcome messages. We all want to come back. We all want to gather. We all want to worship and hug and sing. And the message is that those things may be well in our dis off in the distance. But the message Isaiah brings next is that God is with us and we are still a community. And that's the message I'm bringing today to you too. We are still a community. We are still going to gather in our hearts. We're gonna gather in online worship. We're gonna start offering Bible studies and book studies online. And I'm gonna start showing up in your backyards to visit you at a safe distance with a mask on. Our message is that yes, just like Dunkin' Donuts, the church building is closed. But the spirit of our church and our people is still alive. And the message Isaiah brings is as true today as it was then. Our message is that God is with us and we need to fear not. Activist and author Glennon Doyle recently wrote a book called Untamed. And in it, there was a story that really captured me. Glennon was going through a really difficult time in her personal life and as the mother in the family was feeling responsible for all of the difficulties. And she spoke with a friend of hers who said, Glennon, imagine your family as being passengers on a plane. 
Your kids are the passengers, and you are the flight attendant. And whenever we're on a plane and we hear that there's turbulence or there's something going wrong, we get scared. What do we do? We look to the flight attendant. And she said, Glennon, in those moments, you just keep serving the peanuts. You stay calm, you stay rational, you just keep doing what needs to be done to restore a sense of normalcy. I'm about to get on a plane and I can't help but think that God overall is our pilot. God is the pilot and we are all passengers. We're all passengers on the same plane. But as Christians, we are called to not always just be the passengers. We are called also to be the flight attendants. We are called to be the ones who have the message of hope, the message of fear not for I am with you. Not just that God is with us, but that we are there with and for each other. So I want you to go out into the world as the flight attendants I know you can be. And whatever you do, keep serving the peanuts. Let's go. Remember, no matter where you go in the world, keep serving the peanuts. Amen.
Let us come together in a time of prayer together, first in a time of silence, and then in a pastoral prayer of the people. Let us pray. Loving and ever-present God, we have come into your presence this morning with singing and with praise. We have come this morning eager to hear your still small voice among all of the noise of our world. And as we gather this morning, we lift up in particular those whose lives have touched ours, those who are struggling that we know of. We pray particularly this morning for Shirley as she continues to recover. For the family of Jackie, a friend of Barbara Herbert's who has passed away this week. For all of her loved ones and all who knew and cherished her. We ask that you come and comfort them, O oh God. We pray for Kevin, the Ellis's son-in-law. We pray for diagnoses and for healing. We pray continued prayers for Sue Gatotis and continued prayers for John who is battling COVID. John, a friend of Sue Hill and Deb White's. And we continue to pray for Vera as she begins treatment. Loving and gracious God, with all of these people in our hearts and in our minds, we also lift up those whom we have not named, those whose names are known only to you. And we ask that you meet all in our world who are struggling, those who are struggling with loss, with racial inequity, with homelessness, with COVID. We pray, O oh God, that you will offer what each most needs, and that you will help and inspire those around them to be your hands and your feet, to offer your love and theirs when it is most needed. Loving and gracious God, we are grateful for this time together, and we pray as always that you hear the prayers of your people. Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory in each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Come, for all is ready. The table is prepared before you, and it is ready and open to all who seek to follow Christ more closely in their lives. As we come to this table, I invite us first to join in a brief prayer. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for your many acts of salvation for the many signs and signals of your presence in our lives. We thank you, O God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his ministry and his teaching in his life among us, for his death and resurrection, and for all that has allowed us to find ways to better commune with you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill this bread and this cup so that we may partake together and fill our bodies and spirits anew with your energy, your light, and your purpose. Loving God, come and be present, we pray. Amen. As we come to this table, we remember that night that Jesus gathered his disciples together in the upper room. And that night, after having dinner, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And on that same night, again after giving thanks to God for it, Jesus poured out this cup. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of forgiveness for you and for all. Ministering to you in his name, we give you this bread and this cup. I know at home you have gathered your communion elements.
invite you now to share with me in communion. Take this bread, dip it in this juice, and I invite you to take and eat the bread of life and the cup of forgiveness. Let us pray together. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that you have once again invited us to your table, that you have once again joined us in refreshing our bodies and our spirits so that we may go out and serve you. Inspire us and fill us anew, we pray. Amen. As we sit with the disciples at the table, we cannot help but remember and feel their presence with us. That night, one disciple went out and before the cock crowed three times, denied ever knowing Jesus. Another disciple went out and abandoned him for money. The others merely went out and deserted him. We have just sat with Jesus at his table. Will we go forth and abandon him, or will we go forth to serve him? Let us pray that we will serve him. Amen. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ralph Cutter for his encouragement and his support present this song to the church. together, I invite us to continue to remember that even in the most turbulent times of our lives, God walks with us, and our job is to rely on God and to keep serving the peanuts. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.